Hey everyone, it's uh, Sunday, November 19th, and uh, oh, temperature's gone down. It's just above 60. It was uh, 68 just a couple minutes ago, and uh, I'm really glad that it warmed up today. It was pretty cool this morning. But uh, anyway, today's project is uh, I need to uh, change and flush the transmission fluid in the Suzuki, so uh, I'm going to give that a shot today. This will be uh, the first time I've ever uh, flushed a system like this. I'm used to dropping the pan and changing the filter. So hopefully this uh, this goes well. So um, anyway, the only tools you uh, should really need for this, uh, since I looked into it, is a 24 millimeter for the drain and uh, a pair of pliers to uh, get the hose clamp off. So, uh, you know, let me get back to the Suzuki. So, uh, yeah, right here's our dipstick. And if we look a little farther down, there's uh, this hose right here. I don't know how well the camera can see it. But that should be the uh, return line to the transmission. And uh, if you follow it down here, I know the camera's not going to be able to get it. But it should go to the bottom of the radiator for uh, a little oil cooler that it plugs into. So uh, I'm going to try and actually take this hose off and see if I can drop it down there and I have a... Uh, where is it? I have a uh, transmission oil pan. So I'm hoping just to uh, loosen that hose, maybe give it a little turn, hopefully it'll aim in the right direction. I see a lot of people use a bucket. Uh, this will be a lot easier. Uh, I know part of my splash guard is off, but at least uh, I can get right to it for the most part. So uh, that's the game plan. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll see how it goes. So be back in a minute. Alright, so I have the car jacked up and uh, I got it on the jack stand there. So I don't mind admitting it took me a, a minute or two to, to find this uh, transmission drain plug. But uh, on the driver's side, we'll come down under here. And, uh, yeah, the wrench gives it away, right? But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's on that side. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to get to. It is a 24 millimeter, which I do have a 24 millimeter socket, but there's no getting a, a socket and the ratchet behind there so uh i got this is a 15 16 uh stubby wrench it's the only 15 16 i can find at the moment but uh it fits it perfectly if i can uh, get it back on there but yeah hardly any play at all it uh might actually be 15 16 so alrighty i'm gonna loosen that up and uh drain this old transmission fluid out and uh i'll catch you in the next part All right, now that it's done mostly draining, I'm going to put the, uh, the plug back in. This is actually the perfect wrench to tighten a plug up. It's not too big. Cool. 
Alright, and I'll just leave this down here. Alrighty, I got the uh, drain plug back in the transmission, and uh, it's time to fill the transmission back up. And there's a couple of ways to do this as far as I can tell. You can either uh, dump the old stuff out into an empty container. This is completely empty. It's clean and everything. There's no antifreeze in it. Uh, yeah, you can dump that out into here and see how much it took and put the same amount in. Or you can just uh, basically fill it and keep checking it with the... Uh, with the transmission dipstick too. Either way it doesn't it doesn't matter. We're gonna be flushing it out anyway so if a little extra gets in there I'm sure it's not a big deal since uh, we'll have to add it as we're flushing it. So I'll catch you in the next video. Alright since I'll have to drain this oil and clean up anyway I decided that uh, I was gonna put it in the container and see how much we took out so here's my setup. I got a uh, just a five gallon bucket here and uh, I got my huge transmission funnel going into the bottle that way uh, if something were to happen it won't fall over and spill so I'm gonna drain this into there and uh, see what I got alrighty I got uh, all the old oil all the old transmission fluid uh, drained out and it comes up to about here which is about four quarts so uh, I'm just gonna put the whole bottle in and uh, fill the transmission back up. Alrighty, so uh, I got my transmission dipstick out and it's dry. So I drained the right fluid, that's always good to check. And uh, that's nice, they put a Dextron 3 uh, label on the, on the dipstick for you. So you don't put in the uh, wrong transmission fluid. I think anymore, uh, it looks like there's universal, but uh, you always want to make sure you put the right stuff in and uh, just gonna shove this funnel in there I'm not even gonna it actually works good the uh, rubber intake hose here holds the funnel in real nice and tight I like that cool so uh, I'm just gonna throw in the uh, gallon of transmission fluid and uh, then I can start taking the hose off and flushing it So uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, Ed, taught me a long time ago. This is the uh, proper way to pour oil out of uh, out of a container. You see, it doesn't gurgle; goes nice and quick, and uh, a little too quick. I just spilled a whole bunch. Alright, now that uh, I got the full gallon in there, I'm going to uh, check it with the dipstick and see where it's at. It was, uh, it was over full when I checked it. The engine hasn't, I didn't bother running the engine or anything like that. So let's see how much we got in there. Oh yeah, we got uh, plenty of oil in there plenty of transmission fluid so I replaced what came out of it so it's absolutely fine no matter what the dipstick says it, dipstick actually does show that it's over full but uh, enough about that I got plenty of transmission fluid in there and uh, next thing I need to do is disconnect this hose alrighty I, uh, I took the splash shield off to uh, make it a little easier for myself and uh, once again this is the uh, the passenger side and this is closer to the driver side and uh, our one transmission hose goes here this is supposed to be the supply and if you follow it back it's a lot lower on the transmission and this is supposed to be the return over here 
So I'll take that off. Uh, unfortunately, the way they put the clamps, this would have been really easy for me to uh, to do the way I wanted to, but unfortunately, the way this clamp is here, I can't get anything on it, really. I'd have to, like, spin it around, and uh, it's not cooperating, so I'm going to try it the, uh, the method I've seen done before. So uh, I will uh, take this return hose off, I'll hook another hose up, and uh, we'll run that into the drain pan, and then I'll uh, get the funnel ready up top, start the engine, let the old fluid drain, and keep adding new fluid till it comes out nice. So, catch you in the next video. Alright, I'm just about set up here. I have the... Uh, Let's see, the return line going into this bucket, and I actually went to the trouble to hook a, it's supposed to be a 3 8 hose. Uh, this hose, I believe, is 3 8 It says like 9.6 millimeter. Uh, it was a little tight. I heated it up with the torch, and I even went to the trouble of putting a hose clamp on there. The, uh, the other line, just in case I do get it wrong, I have it going into a bucket. So... Hopefully I have it right, and uh, I'll be able to see the oil as it comes out, and when it turns, you know, nice and new, I can shut the car off. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get this on video, on uh, camera as well, but uh, well, that's unusual. We got a, we got a visitor. <laughs> Alrighty. So anyway, I wanted to get this on video too. Uh, I decided to take the the hose off. This just pops off. It just uh, no clamp or anything. And then uh, to get this off, uh, it's two 10 millimeter bolts here. And uh, reason why I'm putting this in the video is because it's tricky. And then after that, uh, you can either leave this on or take it off. I took it off so it'll kind of move easier. Then you just gotta shake the crap out of it till it uh, releases out of the out of the two uh, like rubber detents in there that it goes into and then that'll come off for you. But uh, yeah, it's been a while since I had it off and uh, it took me a while but I wanted to get all this out of the way so I could uh, get this there we go funnel in there better looks like this uh, this spring here to help hold it in this little detent spring doesn't help matters so uh, I got that all loose that'll do it's a little looser than I like but it really shouldn't oh there it fell out it really shouldn't fall out I'll be careful almost was better the other way but uh, I want to try and avoid it spilling out of the tube so uh, yeah, uh, just give me a second here, I'll get ready, and uh, we'll see how this Alrighty. goes. Alrighty, I'm all set up here. I have the transmission fluid ready to go. Probably the smartest thing would be to... Well, either way, I'm going to have to check it, so we'll see how this goes. This is going to be a little hectic, but uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. Oh, there it goes. Cool. I got that right. Now I got to start adding fluid. And yeah, it looks like if you pour too fast, it'll just leak right out. Looks like it's going to take the whole thing. 
and I'm just it's just spilling right out down there making a huge mess Alright, that looks a lot better. And I'm making a mess again. Yeah, it looks good. Alright. That wasn't too terribly bad. I made about as much of a mess as I thought I would. Oh, I wish I would have had the pan under there. I should have kicked that back earlier. But, uh, let's see what's coming out now. That doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty brand new. I could have probably stopped a little earlier. That definitely looks like the better part of a gallon. Hopefully not too much more. Well, that went pretty good, except for uh, having the oil come out of the tube again. I guess if uh, I would have totally moved this out of the way, it probably would have worked better, but oh well. I'm happy with that. That looks like that's nice and clean. Alrighty. So uh, that just about does it for the flush. I got a lot of uh, oil to clean up here. Just have to uh, unhook everything back up, unhook this stuff, and uh, it'll be done. Check the uh, check the transmission level. So, till next video, I'll catch you later. Alrighty, I got the hoses all hooked back up, and uh, got the car down, and got most of the stuff out of the way and put away. And uh, I'm gonna check the transmission fluid here. And uh, it's kind of hard to see, maybe on camera, but it's low. It's uh, just below the low cold point. So I'm going to put at least one, maybe two more quarts in it, and then it should be right in the middle. After I get this topped off, I'll show you what I do to uh, make sure that all the fluid's in the system and how to check it quick and easy. When I change the transmission fluid to check the check to see if I have the proper level. I'm just gonna start it, keep my foot on the brake, and uh, go through the gears, put it in reverse. You can feel the, the transmission kick in. Put it in neutral, put it in drive. All right, and that's all you need to do. Put it back in park, I can take the parking brake off. And uh, this car you don't need to leave run. You can uh, you can check it when it's cold and in park and new or uh, neutral, I guess. But uh, that should have pulled all the fluid through, you know. So uh, we'll check the level. And uh, if it's good, it's good. If it needs some more, it needs some more. Alrighty, I got the uh, transmission fluid all topped off and. Uh, one good thing to note is that uh, since this was recently done, and uh, even though it is full, uh, I'm going to check it <laughs> pretty frequently. Uh, at least the uh, next couple times I use it to make sure I have the right fluid level in there and everything's working right. But uh, looks like that's it. So uh, till next time, I'll catch you guys later.